Hi, my name is Patty Bobrick, and I'm a physical therapist. I work at Yampa Valley Medical Center, which is part of UC Health in beautiful Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I have been doing MS work for over 30 years, and I am an MS certified specialist. I have the great pleasure of being joined for this discussion by a distinguished colleague in the MS community, Colleen Harris. Hi everyone, my name's Colleen Harris and I am a nurse practitioner at the University of Calgary MS Clinic where I too have been involved in MS care for more than 30 years um, and have been fortunate enough to work with a multidisciplinary rehab team. We're gonna be talking this morning about comprehensive rehab for early MS, are there benefits? So to set the stage, I just wanted to talk a little bit about medical intervention for early MS. It really has become standard of care that early use of disease-modifying therapies to maintain neurological reserve is what we all strive for. That neurological reserve is two points, uh, brain reserve, which is kind of brain volume, and cognitive reserve, which is our brain's ability to process information and act on it. So we know that the disease-modifying therapies decrease relapse rate, they decrease uh, the chance for brain atrophy, and we even have data to show that if someone's identified with clinically isolated syndrome and we initiate DMT therapies, that we can delay the onset of clinically definite F MS. And so these are all really positive things about early intervention with medical treatment, but that's not the case for rehab. Uh, rehab has been traditionally more reactive than proactive. To give you some information about that comprehensive rehab team, um, I'd like to identify the main players in that. We usually think about the core team in the comprehensive team as physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech and language pathologists. Physical therapists like myself are the mobility specialists. We look at movement, walking, we look at strength. Uh, we're the key people that initiate exercise program for uh, not only strengthening, but fitness and endurance. There are subspecialties within physical therapy, for instance, vestibular rehab and pelvic health that can address symptoms of MS also. Occupational therapists are the folks, the clinicians that address activities of daily living. There are functional skills people. Uh, they look at life's desired roles for an individual and try to maintain independence in those life roles. There's also subspecialties there with driving and visual retraining. Uh, occupational therapists are also involved in cognitive retraining, cognitive strategies. And speech and language pathologists, they are the clinicians that work on communication uh, and also swallowing dysphagia. Uh, dysphagia can happen in more than a third of our patients and it can happen early on and I think it's very underutilized. Uh, speech and language pathologists also deal with cognitive retraining. So. Having said all of the wonderful things that a rehab team can provide, Colleen, would you please tell us why you think that we should be advocating for early referral to the rehab team? My involvement with MS care dates back um, to pre-disease modifying therapies when we did very little other than diagnose the disease and try and manage relapses. With the introduction of disease-modifying therapies that actually impact the course of the disease, the uh, world of MS opened up wide as far as treatment. In the early days, rehabilitation came a lot later than it does now, and it was used to help with functional limitations, post-relapse, or um, progressive phases of the disease. We very soon got on board not only just treating um, the disease with the disease modifying therapies, but also treating the whole person. And I was able to witness these multidisciplinary MS centers develop um, over the course of a couple of years because we were seeing so many more patients because we had good introductory treatments for them. And so I, we learned very quickly that um, we need rehab not just for relapses, we want it for promoting the whole wellness picture. Um, and it is so beneficial to be able to have patients have a, a thorough rehabilitation assessment um, at the beginning of their MS journey. And if they were to develop 
issues as they go along in the trajectory of their illness, then we are able to evaluate how they're doing and how much functional loss they have at that point in time and where our goals are um, to do better. Having um, rehab at the beginning helps a patient build their healthcare team. The healthcare team in MS is just not a physician or a neurologist. It's composed of the nurses that take care of them, um, other medical disciplines like the urologist, um, and so too is the rehab team. As Patty very eloquently pointed out, there is a full complement of specialists now available and treating MS. And our goal is to keep the comprehensive care model um, and get them involved right at the beginning so we can promote a wellness-based model along with getting um, them on effective disease-modifying therapies. So we're learning more and more, Colleen, about the actual um, physiological benefits of early referral. And although there isn't a huge body of literature to support that, uh, a, a lot of wonderful trends are now emerging. And I'd just like to kind of share a few of those benefits that we're seeing. Most of the work these days have been done in the role of exercise with MS. But certainly, if you think about, uh, as I talk about what benefits there are there, you can see how that might translate to all members of the team and, and the interventions that they provide for their patients. So in regards to uh, individuals with MS who exercise versus those individuals who don't exercise, we know that there's actually a lower relapse rate with uh folks who exercise with MS by a little bit more than 25%. So when you think about exercise, we shouldn't be thinking about exercise only in the realm of kind of fitness and wellness, but also exercise as medicine as part as the medical plan. Um, they're looking more and more now at uh, biomarkers and what exercise does uh, actually in our central nervous system, even in MS. Um, there's a uh, a negative chemical, a pathogenic molecule in our brain, MMP2, which it breaks down the blood-brain barrier. And in exercise, we know that that MMP2 is lowered. So there might even be a um, uh, anti-inflammatory effect of exercise on the brain. If uh, we look at MRI data, MRI data on those folks that exercise, there's a trend towards increased cortical thickening and uh, decreased brain atrophy, which is huge. We're trying to preserve that neurological reserve. So that's also huge. When we're looking at some of the chemicals that are released when we exercise, BDNF comes to the forefront, brain-derived neurotropic factor. We know in healthy uh, individuals that in the presence of BDNF, there is uh, better motor acquisition, better skill acquisition, and better retention of those skills and also improvement in cognition. So another wonderful thing that exercise can do. One more point that I wanted to bring up, some studies have looked at the brain connections, how our synapses work in the presence of exercise. And for folks who do exercise, there's improved synaptic efficiency. And when we're dealing with a disease that is all about tr transmission, um, that becomes very important. So that's the data in the world of exercise. But you know, it, from a more practical approach also, when we think about the early intervention by the rehab team, um, especially for those folks who have training in MS, we can identify problems or symptoms early in the disease so they don't become so problematic later on. The example I always like to use is um, a little bit of weakness in dorsiflexions, the muscles that lift the foot up that would change somebody's walking pattern and their gait efficiency is uh, decreased. And they put stress and strain on joints and structures that aren't meant to have you know, these, these uh, strains on them. And theoretically or hypothetically down the line, you can end up with a knee or a hip or a back problem, which then they're going to an orthopedist for. And if we could have prevented that at the start of it or done some intervention, then we've saved healthcare dollars, just like early intervention with speech and identifying swallowing issues. If we um, can identify early on and treat swallowing problems and um, prevent an aspiration pneumonia, that's huge, not only for someone's quality of life, but again, in the, in the realm of healthcare dollars. 
And we know that people who have a lot of comorbidities don't do as well with their MS. So if we can, as you said, Kelly, kind of have this holistic approach and treat the whole person, that in the end, they'll do better. Knowing all of this now, Kelly, what do you see as some of the barriers to that early referral? In the very beginning, it can sometimes be the patient not wanting to come to terms with the diagnosis, um, not wanting to think that they need rehabilitation because unfortunately there's still a bit of stigma associated with the term rehabilitation. Um, and we can't get them to the service. They're not ready to accept that we would like to know their baseline and we want to be able to get them to rehab so we can encourage them to live this healthy lifestyle, to develop an exercise, home-based exercise routine. But their patient acceptance sometimes is the biggest barrier. Although now we temper it with wellness and we temper it with the fact that we all as healthy adults should be looking at daily fitness. And if we can sort of tamper a new diagnosis with the fact that this is really what everyone else should be doing anyway, is that healthy um, approach to life, making sure they get enough uh, activity during the day, not sitting around too much, um, going for a walk, uh, watching their weight, watching what they eat. That often helps with the very first barrier. And the most important barrier is the patient's perception. And then we have to look at the types of programs that are out there and the types of practitioners that you have access to. I've been very lucky to have a wonderful multidisciplinary rehab program um, for some time. And it have, I have seen it make a huge difference on the way we're able to keep people healthy along with medication. We're also getting people active. They're joining fitness groups and they have a different outlook. They know that it's not just about drugs. Uh, it's about living well. It's about taking care of their health. So we got again the services that are trained in treating and managing MS. And that pertains to OTs, PTs, the types of swallowing issues they may experience. It's quite specialized, and we need uh, therapists that are geared and are educated to the MS approach. And then there is the struggle we all have with ongoing funding. Um, even if we have the availability of these wonderful therapists in the community or in our institution, um, can we get them funded? Can we get them funded for our program? Um, since we started our rehab program in my clinic some 20 years ago, we still fight yearly for funding to maintain that funding. And we want to make sure that we're not forgotten. So we all have to be advocates, uh, whether you're a nurse or a doctor or OTPT or speech and swallowing, we all advocate to keep our services um, because we know that we need each other. We can do a really good job, as you pointed to, Patty, and it can be cost-effective if we maintain our comprehensive multidisciplinary teams. I'm quite proud of how far we've come with multidisciplinary MS care. Um, we are truly making a big difference. It's enjoyable to be a practitioner in MS care because we can have so much more um, influence on the outcomes of the patients that we take care of. Agreed. So I think the takeaway point is that early keeps their patients healthier, gives them better outcomes, can have impact on what's happening in the brain. And the comprehensive team, if it's well-trained, can provide those services early on and throughout the course of the disease. Thank you for joining us. 